Uh, so very good morning to one and all present here. So I welcome you to the 48th episode of Yankee Tech Talks on uh, recycling of electric vehicle mobility. So today with us, we have Mr. Rajesh Gupta. Raj, uh, Rajesh Gupta won't let your efforts go waste, literally because what's trash to you is, is a treasure to Mr. Rajesh. Mr. Rajesh is a director of Evergreen Recycle Coro India Private Limited who gave up a lucrative family business in early 2010 to follow his dream. He combined his love for the planet and respect for the humanity, dream to achieve new heights in sustainability and circular economy, to preserve our planet for the upcoming generation. Also leading an award-winning organization with a triple bottom line approach, people, planet, and profit. It's a pleasure to have you with us today, sir. Uh, you can start with your presentation. Good morning, everyone. Morning, sir. Yeah. First of all, uh, I would like to thank uh, thank you uh, for giving us opportunity to speak about ourselves and uh, to highlight uh, the work done by Recycle Karo. So I think uh, my presentation is visible to everyone, right? Is it? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Great. Before I start with the presentation, uh, I would like to uh, I like I would like to introduce introduce you all about my company. Uh, so, Recycle Garo, as the name says itself, it's it is uh, uh, all about recycling. So, the journey started in the year 2010. Initially, this was just a just a paper waste collection company because we wanted to understand the market and we wanted to uh, understand uh, how the informal sector works. And the vision uh, that time, the vision was very simple to uh, since this market was a very unorganized one, we wanted to organize this entire market. So we started uh, me along with my friends. We started uh, uh, visiting residences, societies and then registering the societies and creating a database and then providing them with the with the scheduled pickup so this was the start of recycle Karo. and also i remember we launched a campaign which was a clean earth campaign and initially when we were uh, exploring the opportunities in recycling field uh, we realized there is a big market uh, coming up for uh, recycling of uh, electronic waste and I remember we used to uh, recycle paper waste for Accenture and uh, we received inquiry if something about uh, uh, electronic waste can be done. So this, this was the start. And in the year two, uh, 2013, we set up our first electronic waste recycling facility, which was in Wada, uh, Maharashtra, which is uh, close to uh, 80 kilometers from Mumbai. So we uh, initially, it was just a dismantling company. We used, just used to uh, dismantle the electronic equipments and we used to just uh, uh, i mean uh, segregate uh, ms brass copper aluminum and just we used to send it to the respective recyclers and uh, this was uh, recycled uh, later on in the year 2015 we thought of extracting precious metals from the circuit boards so this was uh, this was when uh, recycle caro got serious about about hydrometallurgy uh, uh, hydrometallurgy processes and uh, we uh, successfully extracted uh, precious metals out of uh, electronic waste uh, pcbs and uh, it was uh, going well in the uh, year 2018 we thought of there was a big uh, stream of uh, lithium ion batteries in the in the uh, in the market as well as uh, all around us but there was no one recycling that and uh, and uh, it had cobalt nickel manganese this was uh, we thought it as an opportunity and also it was a big waste stream and people they had no no idea how how to handle this type of waste so we started our uh, initial research and in the year uh, 2019 we came up with a small pilot plant uh, which was capable of recycling uh, lithium ion batteries and we successfully extracted the uh, cobalt nickel manganese out of this small plant uh, but uh, of course, there were many challenges. Uh, 
uh, in doing uh, in 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 recycling this and we were only like we were only uh, able to extract uh, four metric tons of cobalt sulfate uh, by then so it was also economically not uh, uh, feasible for us then in the year 2000 uh, i mean last year 2021 we came up with a fully commercial operations uh, and uh, we now uh, i'm very happy to say we now uh, work on a very commercial level so now uh, the plant is capable of handling almost 200 metric tons of lithium ion batteries and we are able to extract close to 70 metric tons of cobalt sulfate then uh, nickel nickel self in the form of sulfate uh, lithium carbonate so this is in a nutshell about uh, recycle karo so i think uh, since uh, everyone here are like aware of what level of electronic waste is generated globally if you can see we have uh, around 50 metric tons of electronic waste is produced every year globally and this is increasing uh, by 21% in every 5 uh, years so that that means uh, 7.5 or kg of electronic waste per capita is generated and uh, and our share uh, india produces close to 3.23 metric tons of electronic waste every year and this is to increase 38% by 2030 so so you can imagine the uh, the amount of electronic waste we will be uh, seeing in the future and since india is like drastically moving towards digital world like uh, we have upi in place then uh, most of the government uh, most of the government uh, websites or government related works are already moved towards digital so there is lots of uh, uh, server space utilized lots of many data centers coming up so of course uh, by by uh, there will be lots of electronic waste coming up in the future so it is estimated by 2030 uh, the electronic waste to grow almost 38% uh, than the current uh, the current uh, capacity that um, we generate electronic waste in this graph you also you can see uh, mumbai being the most uh, uh, i mean most electronic waste in the uh, in our country it's generated in india you can see this there is a graph on the right side and about lithium ion battery if you see uh 500 uh, gigawatt gigawatt hours of uh, uh lithium ion batteries are uh, i mean it's uh, used globally at present and uh, and on the right you can see by 2013 this numbers to go to 3000 more than 3000 gigawatt hours so you can see the drastic uh i mean the future of uh, ev since ev is uh, i mean all the countries they have their targets so the ev is going to take take over the current uh, automobile market and just just see the gap 2020 and 2030 so by 2030 we will be uh, globally it is expected to reach 3000 gigawatt hour so this is going to be huge and uh, just imagine the heap of uh, batteries that will be generated so of course uh, by then we will need a huge infrastructure for uh, recycling this batteries so it will be a big uh, i mean if not handled properly it can be a big problem for us and luckily recycle karo has uh, already achieved uh, i mean recycling the recycling rate we have achieved is close to 95% i think everyone knows about electronic waste so let's not get into this electronic waste see uh, for uh, i would like to mention electronic waste recycling or lithium ion battery recycling let's not only look at uh, the environment uh, environment perspective because this this uh, waste it's it's got a big opportunity as well because electronic waste being a uh, uh being a waste but if all the components all the metals recovered properly this can be a asset for uh, for for the country because as as you all are aware india we don't have a uh, cobalt reserve or uh, lithium reserve with us so we are totally dependent on uh, 
foreign countries for uh, uh, for these metals but this waste that we have already utilized if we are able to extract all these metals out of this so this can be a resource for us since india is getting into semiconductor market and we have many factories coming up which will be manufacturing electronics so we can extract all the required metals from the waste itself this this is called urban mining so this is what recycle garo uh, is uh, aiming at doing so recycle garo wants to extract all the rare earths metals rare earths precious semi precious metals everything uh, we want to uh, uh, we want to extract and we want to supply to our uh, our manufacturers our stakeholders who are into recycling or who are sorry who are into manufacturing of electronics so and uh, luckily we have achieved uh, uh, we are already extracting close to nine metals so i so this should also be uh, uh, we should also look this as a opportunity for our country so my uh, this this uh, slide uh, will uh, like you can see battery what all metals uh, uh, lithium ion battery see I also i would like to mention this batteries there are uh, two uh, there are various chemistries of lithium ion batteries uh, it can be either nmc battery or it can be lithium phosphate battery the ev i'm talking about the ev batteries nmc is nickel manganese cobalt and th this can be in various uh, proportion like 20% 20% 60% so it depends on various manufacturers so there are these chemistries available in the market so one is uh, nmc battery and the other other one is uh, lithium phosphate battery so this both the batteries are uh, right now available in the market and recycle garo is capable of recycling both these chemistries as you can see in the nmc batteries you have cobalt you have nickel you have manganese so all these are very uh, i mean uh, uh, strategic uh, uh, strategic metals which are uh, which have wide applications so if we can, if we manage to uh, recover uh, all these metals so it it will be a great uh, thing for our country as well so uh, also uh, if if we don't recycle these batteries what happens so there is a this slide uh, it shows if you, you all can just go through the slide it shows that only 95% of electronic waste uh, all the Uh, rather i should say only 5% is recycled rather 95% it ends up at landfill or it goes to the unorganized sector and it is uh, treated uh, uh, not not uh, it is not treated scientifically so it's important that whatever waste is generated it has to be treated in a scientific way there are other ways to uh, to tackle or to process this waste too but it has to recycled in a scientific scientific way also the 70% of heavy metals uh, that is uh, lead mercury found in landfill it comes from electronic waste so so we should not encourage uh, like throwing electronic waste in the dustbin rather we should collect the electronic waste and it should go uh, it should uh, go through a proper recycler or uh, or now municipalities or government agencies they have a proper uh, e waste collection drives or maybe you can go deposit your electronic waste or the batteries to a municipal uh, 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 there is a collection point all the municipalities they have a collection point a uh, solid waste collection point so it can be go dropped over there or you can also call a recycler and you can ask uh, them if they can provide a pickup service for your electronic waste or uh, batteries so electronic waste if not recycled it's a big problem and it's going to be a big trouble for our uh, environment because this electronic waste uh, it has mercury it has uh, lead and if it gets mixed in the water stream i mean if if it is just uh, uh, if if it is just de it decomposes itself it may get into the water stream and uh, it, this will be a big uh, disaster if it uh, it is actually happening uh, but we can control this 
so you should make sure that it is not sent to the landfill and also you all must be aware the recent fires in the dump site so this fire fire is because there are uh, various uh, uh, like electronic waste the lithium ion battery if it is sent to dump, uh, dump site uh, the amount of heat uh, uh, it will make the lithium ion battery to blast and you all are aware the lithium is as soon as it comes in contact with the oxygen it, it catches fire so this is the this is also one of the reason why uh, dump sites they catch fire so if we if we recycle we can save 4.2% of the greenhouse emissions uh, like i mentioned about the dump site they automatically start burning so which which uh, this methane uh, emission uh, which is uh, again a big uh, environmental hazard lead and mercury now as per the new norms uh, the manufacturer the electronic manufacturer they are they are told not to use uh, elect, uh, lead as as much as possible they, they they are told not to use lead and mercury this heavy metals are already in our uh, they are already creating problem for us so the new electronics as per the new norms they have very low level of lead and mercury like electronic waste uh, the way recycle karo does it we we are like tied up with companies like it companies who are really uh, sustainable like uh, uh, infosys is one of them capgemini is one of them so we have a service where we uh, where we go visit uh, to the client side and then we provide a data destruction services we have we are tied up with blanco to erase the data and once the data is erased the material comes to our uh, facility where we uh, process and we extract all the metals uh, anyone if interested you can come visit our facility we can show you how the metals are extracted this is very uh, i mean very innovative uh, technology where you can see all the materials getting extracted from the electronic waste and the lithium ion batteries this slide it uh, speaks about uh, the way uh, the how how the battery recycling uh, 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 works so once we receive the batteries for example suppose if we receive a, uh, a battery uh, a ev battery uh, from a tata vehicle just an example so it comes to our facility and first we have a facility to discharge these batteries because even if these batteries are not working but it has cells and there are there are chances that these cells are, will uh, are charged and it may uh, and if it is processed as it is it may lead to a big fire so we may we ensure that the batteries are properly uh, discharged and upon discharging we deassemble there the, the ev uh, uh, in my uh, next slide i will also show you how the internal ev battery looks it has uh, lots of small cells connected uh, uh, in series and in parallel so uh, so we 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 need to dismantle all these uh, cells first so once we dismantle the battery we, we try removing all the cells and uh, what the removed cells it, it is sent for a crushing process so there are huge shredders which will crush these batteries and once the batteries are shredded it, it is passed through various uh, separation techniques uh, we have uh, magnetic separator ed current separator gravity separator all these uh, separate uh, separators are used to uh, separate uh, there is a black mass a black mass a copper foil and aluminum foil and also there is a plastic in it so this all these components are separated and the black mass is where all our uh, metals are like uh, cobalt nickel manganese so we have a, so this is where the hydrometallurgy uh, process starts hydrometallurgy process we start uh, uh, we have a leaching process then we have we have a we have huge filter press to filter uh, the leached uh, liquid and then we have a uh, we have a, a refining technique we use a solvent extraction refining technique to refine all these materials and upon uh, refining 
at the end we get uh, cobalt in the form of sulfate which is cobalt sulfate nickel sulfate manganese sulfate uh, lithium in the form of carbonate so yeah this is the this is a ev battery you can see this is the ev battery so you can see this these are the cells these are the battery cells small cells connected so we dismantle and remove the cells first there are also some wires cables then there is bms battery management system which is electronics so we dismantle everything first so recycle karo so far last year we have managed to recycle close to 600 metric tons of electronic waste and uh, every month we re recycle close to 150 metric tons of uh, lithium ion batteries which includes uh, batteries coming out from cell phones laptops and uh, very few uh, ev batteries as of now but this ev battery percentage will grow in future and i am very proud of my team and of my company that we have saved close to 3.5 million tons of carbon footprint we also have uh, various awareness sessions we go to society schools colleges and educate people about uh, the benefits and importance of recycling so we have a team or uh, sometimes we ourselves in the office we visit uh, schools colleges and we educate the current recycle karo's current plant is uh, set up at, uh, uh, we have a 3.5 acre of land uh, and we are already uh, uh, into expansion so we, we will be expanding our facility uh, soon what recycle karo aims at uh, our vision is to to be uh, top 10 uh, uh, recyclers in the world uh, who are able to extract all the precious rare uh, rarer metals in this in a scientific way these are some of the photographs from the facility this the the current facility we have this is the leaching these these are the reactors so we have nine reactors 30000 liters nine reactors we have this is the evaporator we have a very high end lab uh, capable of analyzing all the metals so we have atomic absorption photo spectrometer uh, which is able to analyze all the metals and also if there, there is any pollutant in the sample so we analyze this in our lab as i already mentioned recycle karo has already uh, has already done lots of campaigns the cleaner campaign green ganesha campaign uh, we we make uh, in our office we have a, a ganesha idol which is made out of uh, mud uh, and we immerse in the in a pond artificial pond so that is also one of our campaign so, so we keep on doing such campaigns to educate people so we are also uh, we are we follow some standards like 14000 40 uh, 45000 standard so these are all the certificates that we have so this is about my team so we are my colleague rupesh and rajesh we are both uh, 